I just wanted to show a close-up of the dog. So this is from the dogs from behind. You can see how I have the cute little dog beach outfit on the one. I had to tuck it under because it's a little bit large, but that outfit will fit a real pet or a real dog. And this is what they look like from the front. So you can see the eyes that I made for the boy corgi dog, puppy corgi dog. And then for the girl, I trimmed underneath the black glitter felt. And I also put eyelashes on the side for hers. And I think it looked really adorable. There's going to be a separate video tutorial for the little locket that I made. You can see that there's a little crochet hook in there. And I got my crochet hooks from Pastiche Accessories on Etsy. And you can also put little lock lockets on your dog. For my one boy dog, I put a locket that says, I love my dog. And then for the girl dog, I put this little locket, fairy door locket, where you can actually open it up. And then there's a picture that you can put inside. I'm trying to do this one-handed. So this is going to be a gift for someone, graduation gift. And then also, I have a little hair clip. So these are sold separately. I got this one from a craft fair. Someone actually made these. These are handmade. They have cute little bunnies on them. And you can actually wear them in your hair. So you can actually remove them and really wear them. And they have little claws that will go right onto the dog ear. And I also wanted to show a close-up of her without her dog outfit. So I actually show for beginners, I show how to use this style of yarn for the fur. And then for the more advanced crocheters, this is what the pipsqueak yarn looks like. And I show in the video tutorial the differences and how to make both. And this is what they look like with the pipsqueak yarn compared to the snow colored yarn in the front. And they both look adorable. And this is what they look like on top. For this crochet project, you're going to need your 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. You're also going to need a pair of scissors and a tapestry or darning needle. For the eyes, I used a 15 millimeter safety doll eye. These are from 6060 eyes, but I also like glass eyes online to get my safety doll eyes. And again, this is a 15 millimeter size. This part is optional, but if you want to use the white and black glitter felt, then you can go to my blog www.helenmaycrochet.com It also has my link to my YouTube channel. But you can cut these out and then use them to help cut the um, use this as the paper cutout to cut out your felt shape. And then I have the me measurements here if you don't want to go get the down download and you can just make your own. So again, you can just use the safety doll eye if you want to. But if you want to have a little bit more fun, you can use the white cutout as well as the black cutout for the felt. And this is the boy dog that I made, but I'm going to use eyelashes for the girl dog on video tutorial. So these are the same eyelashes that I used for the large corgi dog. And there's a separate video tutorial for the large corgi dog. These are the Kiss Pompadour Blowout Lash. And I'm going to cut it so I'm not going to use the full eyelash like I did for the larger corgi. So I'm going to cut a portion of it to use on the puppy dog. So here you can see I took and cut out my black and white paper cutout. And you can cut out your black glitter felt and this is what it look, looks like. So the black glitter felt I used a thicker felt and this one is by Glitter Friendly. 
It's a 9 by 12 Kunin felt and I have plenty left over for other dogs so this is some of my leftover felt that I already had and you can see the beautiful glitter on the one side and then I just chose a thinner white glitter felt sparkly and then I used my paper cutout to cut out the two white portions so for the nose you can use a safety dog nose if you want to but on video tutorial I'm going to show you how to make your nose and I used a different style of yarn for my larger corgi dog. I'm going to show you a different style of yarn for the puppy dog nose. If you like the collar that I used, I got the collar from Petco. I like the cute little dog bones on it, but you actually get two collars. I used the small one from Bond Company for small, if it's small dog, so it's a real pet collar. It gives you two in a pack and I used the dog bone one for one of my puppy dogs and this one will be, I'll just save for another dog. I've already used one of the small ones with the pink one that I'm going to use on video tutorial. So it was for my pug dog. I have a separate video tutorial for the pug dog. But I used a small one because I, I made a written pattern for the puppy dog which is a pug dog. Pug 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 puppy dog and it's a special written pattern that's only available on my blog so you can go to my blog www.helenmaycrochet.com if you want to see about purchasing the written pattern for the pug dog that also includes the puppy dog but for this video tutorial I'm going to be using this extra extra small collar for small dogs to be used on the puppy dog that I'm making for the corky dog Here's a close-up of the outfit that I chose for the girl dog, Dog Beach. And this is what it looks like on the other side. So it's a, about an extra, extra small dog outfit. So this will fit a real dog too. The main color that I'm going to use is Yarn Bee Soft Secret on video tutorial. The color is Honey. You're going to have plenty of this yarn left over to make this little puppy dog. The color I already said is honey. Here's some information about this yarn. Now I used this for the large dog, corgi dog as well, but you'll need a full skein for the large corgi dog. But for the puppy dog you'll also need only one skein, but you'll have plenty left over. If you like the boy dog's color, puppy dog's color, that one I used Yarn B Soft and Sleek low pill fiber. Here's some information about this yarn. Now the color for this one is tobacco. This yarn you'll need two skeins to make one large corgi dog but you'll have plenty left over with the second skein to make a puppy dog. So on my puppy dog you can see that I use the pipsqueak yarn. The pipsqueak yarn I wouldn't recommend for beginners but you can see how adorable the pipsqueak yarn is. So if you are more advanced and you want to use the pipsqueak yarn, I show how to use the pipsqueak yarn in the fourth part video tutorial for the large crochet corgi dog. It's the same way. So you would use a six millimeter crochet hook for this portion. And it's made the same way as I show you with the Tender Touch. On video tutorial, I'm going to be using Yarn B Tender Touch Snow. So this is the same yarn that I used on the large corgi dogs video tutorial so pe beginners could make it. This yarn is much easier to work with. Now if you're making the puppy dog and the large corgi dog you're going to need two skeins of this. If you're just making the large dog you'll only need one and of course you'll only need one for the puppy dog. You'll have plenty of le yarn left over if you only want the puppy dog corgi. And here's some information about this yarn. Now the only difference on video tutorial we're going to be using the Yarn B Snow yarn for the back portion. The Pipsqueak yarn, you, if you go to part 4 video tutorial at the end where I show how to make the Pipsqueak yarn backside for the larger Corgi, it started the same way. So the only difference is 
that you're going to stop once you get the size that you want. And then, and then the rest of it's made the same way. So on this video tutorial, we have our main color for the dog. We have the fur that we're going to be using for the dog. Now for the nose, I'm going to show a different style of yarn. This is a black glitter or metallic. I think it's Red Heart, I'm not sure, it's some of my leftover yarn. But you can use any 100% acrylic medium 4 style yarn, which is what this is. I just like the little glitter in it. If you want to use the same style yarn that I used for my large corgi dog, you can do that as well. So for my large corgi dog, I use the Karen Simply Soft Black. And so on this video tutorial, I'm going to use the glitter black to show you how to make your own nose. But like I said, you could also use a safety dog nose. I used a 21 millimeter size. But if you don't want to use a safety dog nose, then you can follow along and make a nose with any medium for 100% acrylic yarn. Black yarn of your choice. So for the snout, the ears, and the feet, you're going to need one skein of Red Heart with Love, sorry about that, Red Heart with Love Metallic. Here's some information about this yarn. It's the white color. So I'm using some of my leftover yarn for my puppy dog. And for the feet on my puppy dog, I'm going to be using, because I don't think I'll have enough to make all four feet, so I'm going to use some of my leftover 100% acrylic, I mean 100% cotton. I love this yarn, cotton. But if you get a skein, of this yarn you'll have plenty to make the snout and the ears and the feet. So again I'm going to be combining mine. You don't have to do that. So I'm going to be using this one for the snout and the ears but you could use it for the feet as well. So for mine I'm going to use this style of yarn for the feet. So either would work. Either style of yarn would work. The only recommendation is if you're going to do this as well, make sure that if you're going to, for the feet, you need to use all the same style of yarn. So don't combine yarns for the feet. For the feet, you should use all the same yarn. That way you won't have one foot smaller than the other because different yarn choice will make the feet a different size and you don't want that. So you want your feet to be all the same size, but it's okay if you want to use a separate yarn for the feet and then a separate yarn for the snout and the ears. That would be fine. Now the last yarn would be for the tongue. So the tongue is optional. Oh, the other thing is if for making a mouth, you will need a black yarn for the mouth. So any black yarn would work. And I'm going to be using the black glitter. So even though you're going to use a safety dog nose, you're still going to need a black yarn for the mouth. So for the tongue, if you're going to be making the tongue, I'm using my, I love to keep this on hand, my Karen Simply Soft. I use this same color for the large corgi dog. See, you'll see that you have plenty of this style yarn left over. And the color that I use is watermelon. And here's some information about this yarn. You'll have plenty of this yarn left over for other amigurumi. So we're going to start with the puppy dog's head. Go ahead and grab whatever main color yarn that you're using for the head of your dog. We're going to start with a magic circle. So just take and drape your yarn across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then you're going to take your crochet hook and again I'm using my 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. Go under those two loops that you placed around your two middle fingers and you're going to bring up a loop and then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. Now you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. So just go into that magic circle, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two loops for a single crochet. And you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle.
So now I have six single crochet into the magic circle. You're going to take your forefinger and your thumb and you're going to hold the base of those six single crochet. And now you have two loops on the opposite side. You're going to pull on one of them. If it doesn't close, let go and then pull on the other one, but this one's closing, so I'm going to gently close it. Don't worry if you don't get it completely closed. You can close it more later. Then you're going to let go of that loop and you're going to grab the loose yarn end and then pull on that. Then you can turn your work. We're going to work in rounds. So we're going to work into the first stitch on the round. So you take your crochet hook, go into that first stitch and you want to grab both loops of the stitch. And then you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So you go back into that same stitch and make two single crochet. So again, you're making two single crochet into every stitch around. So now I'm going to go into the next stitch and make two single crochet. So go ahead, make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round and then come back. So now I have a total of 12 stitches in the round and we have an opening in the center of the circle so we're going to close that which is one of the benefits of using a magic circle. Just take your work, turn it over and then just pull on that loose yarn end on the back and then that closes up the center magically which is how it gets its name the magic circle. So now we're going to continue with the increase rounds which means that we're going to continue to increase the number of stitches in the round. Right now we have a total of 12 stitches. So now just take a yarn marker and I just use one of my scraps of yarn and then just place it right where you left off. It will help you keep track of the rounds. And then for our first increase round you're going to make one single crochet into one stitch and then two single crochet into the next stitch. Then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker so you make one single crochet into the next stitch and then two single crochet into the next stitch and then continue repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Now you should have a total of 18 stitches in the round. So I'm not going to give you the stitch count for every increase round because I'm going to show you a little trick we started the magic circle with six single crochet. So the next round we had 12 stitches. Now, after you complete an increase round, just add six to the previous stitch count. So we had 12 from the previous stitch count. If you add six to that, you have a total of 18 stitches in the round. So after this next increase round, you should have add 6 to the 18 that we just finished and then you should have 24 stitches after you finish this next increase round. So we're going to go ahead and make the next increase round. For those of you that already know how to make the increase rounds, we're going to be stopping after one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. So now for this increase round, go ahead and move the yarn marker up and we're going to be going in chronological order. So the last increase round was one single crochet in one stitch and two single crochet into the next stitch. So this increase round will be one single crochet into two stitches. And then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker, one single crochet into two stitches, and then two single crochet 
into the next stitch. And by the time you get back to the yarn marker, you should have a total of 24 stitches in the round. So now, after you finish that round, go ahead and move the yarn marker up. And again, we're going in chronological order, so you know that for this increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches. and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now for the last increase round you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So after that last increase round you should have a total of 36 stitches in the round. So you're going to go ahead and move your yarn marker up and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of five rounds and you're going to leave your yarn marker in place so you can count the rounds and every time that you pass the yarn marker you should still have a stitch count of 36 so we're maintaining the stitch count we're not increasing the stitches in the round and we're not decreasing the stitches in the round so go ahead finish making one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of five rounds. And just leave your yarn marker in its place. So now this is how your work should look. Little cup for the head. And I made one, two, three, four, five rounds and I maintained my stitch count which helps form the cup. Then go ahead and remove the yarn marker and leave a little bit of a loop where you left off and then set this aside. We're going to come back to it after we make the snout and the eyes. So for the snout, you're going to grab your white sparkle yarn that you're going to be using and we're going to start with the magic circle again. So just wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers, hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. And we're going to place the slip knot first. And then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So the same thing that we did for the head. You're going to take your forefinger and thumb, hold the bottom of the six single crochet, and then close the magic circle. Then you're going to turn your work and we're going to work in rounds just like we did for the head. So you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round and then come back. So now I have 12 stitches in the round and we're going to make two more increase rounds. So you take your yarn marker, place it right where you left off, and the first increase round is one single crochet into one stitch, and then two single crochet into the next stitch. And then repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet in one stitch, two single crochet into the next stitch, then for the next increase round is one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. Repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have 24 stitches in the round. Go ahead and move the yarn marker up and now you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around. So we are not increasing and we're not decreasing the stitch count. So we're maintaining the 24 stitch count and we're making one single crochet in every stitch around for four 
rounds. So four rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. So now this is how my work looks after finishing one round, I mean four rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. Go ahead and remove your yarn marker. Then you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. So you take your crochet hook, go into that next stitch, and then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to turn your work, and you're going to make one single crochet into the next stitch, one single crochet into the next three stitches, one, two, three, and that will give you a total of four stitches. Then you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch over. So we're creating that little strip that goes between the eyes. So just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. So now you're going to turn your work and you're going to make one single crochet into the next four stitches. So here's one, two, three, and four. Then you're going to turn your work again and you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch for one, single crochet into the next stitch for two, and then single crochet into the last stitch for three. Then you're going to turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch for one, a single crochet into the next stitch for two. Now you're going to chain one, turn your work, and make a single crochet into the next stitch. And we're going to maintain the stitch count of two. So that was our first row with two. So you chain one, turn your work, and make a single crochet into the next stitch. So that's our second. Chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch for the third row with a stitch count of two. So go ahead, keep repeating that. Chain one, turn your work, and make a single crochet into the next stitch until you have a total of ten. So this is our fourth. So go ahead, finish making a chain one, turn your work, single crochet into the next stitch until you have a total of ten rows with stitch count of two. So after you finish the tenth row of st a stitch count of two, then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the strip onto the dog's puppy dog's head. And now we're going to get the nose ready for the snout. So go ahead and set the snout aside for now. And you're going to need your black colored yarn. And then you're going to take your black colored yarn, you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down, cinch the loop around your crochet hook, and then you're going to make a chain. So you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one, two, three, four, and five. So I have a chain of five. Then you're going to take your crochet hook 
and you're going to go into the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, and then make a single crochet. So yarn over, go through both loops for a single crochet. And then you're going to make one single crochet into the next stitch, one single crochet into the next stitch, and then three single crochet into the last stitch. And as you make your single crochets into that last stitch, you're going to turn your work because we're going to be working in rounds. So again, you need three single crochet into that last stitch. And you're going to go behind the loose yarn end as you crochet to bury the loose yarn end as you work. So now we're on the opposite side. This is where we made our single crochets and we're going to turn and we're on the opposite side. And you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch, a single crochet into the next stitch, and then you can go ahead and cut the loose yarn end. It's nice and buried. And then you're going to make three single crochet into the last stitch. And then you're going to need your yarn marker. Place your yarn marker right where you left off. And then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for two rounds. So two rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. Now after you finish your second round of one single crochet in every stitch around, and I had 11 stitches in the round for each of those rounds, then you can go ahead and remove your yarn marker and then make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the nose on the snout. Now for the nose, I don't use craft stuffing for the nose. I use the same colored yarn. So I'm going to cut a little bit of this black glitter yarn and I'm going to use this as the stuffing for the nose. So you can just take and place the stuffing, the yarn, black yarn, into the nose. And the reason why I do that is because that center portion, oops, sorry, so I just stuffed it into the nose. And the reason why I do that is because the center line, sometimes you can see the white craft stuffing. So this way you can't see it. And it looks cute. So now we're ready to sew the nose onto the snout. So now you should have your tapestry needle onto the long end that you left for sewing. And I usually have where I finished off facing down. And then you're going to take the snout and you want to be careful placing the nose because you want the center strip, the white strip that's going to go between the eyes, to be centered with the nose. And I usually use the magic circle on the snout as a landmark. So here's the magic circle. And then you're going to count one round up. And then at the top edge of that one round up from the magic circle is where you're going to place the nose. And you want to make sure that the nose is centered with the white strip. And then once you're happy with the placement of the nose and it's nice and centered, then you can take your tapestry needle and then you're going to sew all around the base of the nose. So you just go right in and then you just come up at the base of the nose and then just sew the nose in place. So now this is what my nose looks like on the snout. 
and I'm going to bring the black yarn back up through the bottom of the nose right in the center. So I'm coming out with my tapestry needle right at the center of the bottom of the nose. And then you're going to go straight down and I'm going to go past the magic circle right underneath the magic circle. So here's the magic circle right here. And I'm going to go straight down underneath it. And we're going to make the mouth. So now you want to go up one round and over two rounds because we're going to make the smile. Unless you want to make a frown, then you would make it down. But I'm going to make a smile. So I'm up slightly one round and then I'm going to go back in the center. And you want both sides of the mouth to be the same. So make sure that you have them equal on both sides. Then you can tie a knot on the inside and then you have a nice mouth. And then I'm going to show you how to make the tongue. Now go ahead and set the nose and the snout aside for now. We're going to make the, mouth, the tongue. So then you're going to go ahead and grab the pink colored yarn or whatever color you want for the tongue. Then you're going to make the magic circle, just like we've done before. And you're going to start with the slip knot. And then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. I have six single crochet into the magic circle. I'm going to go ahead and close the magic circle. Then you can go ahead and finish off. So just yarn over and then just pull enough yarn through to sew the tongue onto the mouth. And then close the center of the magic circle if you need to. So now you just want to make sure that you have the side of the tongue showing that you want. And then I usually take the magic circle loose yarn end first. And then you can decide if you want the tongue off to the side, the center, or on the other side. So to be fun, I'm just going to place mine over to the side. You want to make sure that you don't cover the mouth. So just underneath the black portion, I'm going to bring the loose yarn end through. And then I'm going to grab the other uh, long loose yarn end that I left for sewing. Hold the tongue in place. Make sure that you don't mess up the smile. And then you just take and sew all across the top edge of the tongue only. So you don't want the tongue flap to be sewn, unless you want it sewn in place but I usually like to leave the, the flap of the tongue free. And then once you finish sewing it, then you can take and tie a knot. I'm just going to sew this one edge down. So then you can take and tie a knot on the inside. And this is what it looks like. So I usually trim my loose yarn ends on the inside. If you have too much of the loose yarn ends, sometimes you can see the pink through and you don't want to do that. So now it's ready for the head. So before we place the snout and the eyes, we want to get the eyes ready. So now you want your white and your black glitter felt. So you need two of the white glitter felt and two of the black glitter felt. Again, I have the free PDF download on my blog, www.helenmaycrochet.com, and then you can cut these out. Now, you can trim these down if you want to. Just remember that whatever you do for one eye, the other eye has to be exactly the same. So, 
The first thing that I'm going to do is cut the hole that goes in the center for the safety doll eye. So you just take the white felt first. You're going to fold it in half and then you're going to take your scissors and you're going to take and make a small cut, a small angled cut and then you're going to repeat that on the other side forming a diamond. Make sure you don't cut all the way across. You just want a small diamond in the center and then once you have that small diamond then you can take and finish trimming it all the way off. So now you have the opening on the white felt. Now you need the opening on the black felt. So you do the same thing. Fold it in half and then you just take and make a small cut in the center and then turn it and make another small angled cut forming a little triangle and then when you open it up it forms a little diamond and then you can take and trim that diamond if you need to. And then you have the opening on the black. So then you can take and place the white on the black and then kind of trim it up the way that you want. So I'm going to trim mine now. Now for the boy's eyes you can see how I left the black portion under here and this is what the boy's eyes look like. For the girl's eyes I trimmed the bottom and like I said if you trim one then you need to make sure that the other eye looks exactly the same and then once you're happy with how the eyes look we're ready to place them on the head. So I take your head now and the loop where we left off should be facing towards the back of the head and this is the front face. So I use the magic circle on top of the head and then you're going to count down six rounds. So one, two, three, four, five, six and then beneath the sixth round is where the top of the black portion will go. So then you can take and place one of the eyes and then just double check one, two, three, four, five, six. So you can see the top portion is underneath the sixth round and you want three stitches between the eyes. So one, two, three and then you could place the second eye and then you just have to make sure that they are even. Then once you have them positioned and they're even you can double check with the snout and the spacing is good. So now we're going to finish the rest of the rounds on the head and you can go ahead and place your safety latches onto the back of the eyes. If you want to wait until after you finish the rest of the rounds on the head you can do that as well if you want to just reposition the eyes just to be sure but I'm pretty sure this is where I want my eyes and if you want to you can sew down with a sewing needle and thread sew down the felt portion but for mine I didn't because the safety latch latches those eyes in place very well so then you just want to position the felt, make sure that the eyes look okay. Then you're going to take and resume where you left off on the back of the head. Just place your yarn marker right where you left off and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of six rounds. So six rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. So now I finished six rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. You can go ahead and remove the yarn marker and then 
Take some craft stuffing and put it into the snout. Use your tapestry needle and I'm not going to sew the top portion yet. I'll go ahead and leave that. I'm going to get an additional amount of the same colored yarn and start sewing it on the bottom first. So I got some additional white colored yarn. You're going to use the long end that you left for sewing on the strip to sew the strip down. So you're going to take and position the snout so that the bottom of the snout is one round up from the bottom of the head. And then you're going to sew the bottom in place. So what you need to do is make sure that the nose is centered and the white strip will go directly down the center between the eyes. So you're going to be sewing the bottom of the snout first. I'm just making sure that everything is lined up because you're going to be pushing down the snout to make it fit. So make sure that the nose is centered between the eyes and the strip will go between the eyes. And then you're going to take and just sew a few stitches along the bottom first to hold it in place, the bottom of the snout in place. So I'm leaving a loose yarn end. And again, you don't want to sew to the bottom round of the head because you're going to be crocheting to close the head. So you want it one round up the snout. So I made one stitch and I'm going to tie a knot on the inside. And then I'm just going to reposition the snout again. And I'm just going to sew a couple of stitches along the bottom just to hold it in place. Then you're going to take and bring the top portion of the snout down and center it between the eyes. And I like to leave a little bit of a gold or the main color of the dog between the snout and the eyes. Then you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to go right at the top and sew along the top. Make sure you don't pull it too tight on the inside because the yarn will stretch across. Make sure the nose stays centered. And then you're just going to sew the top of the snout in place. This just helps, if you sew it in this order, it helps to keep your snout straight. You don't want to have a crooked snout. The face is one of the most important things, so you want the face to be very cute. And then after you finish sewing the top, then you can sew the sides down and then sew the strip on top. And all you do is just sew all around the base of the snout. So you want to sew along the edge on both sides and then along the edge of the strip down the center. Make sure you center the white strip so that it's not crooked. You want it straight down the center. Then I have my snout all sewn in place. I have one round underneath the snout to finish closing the head and my strip is directly down the center and my nose is straight between the eyes. So now you're ready to close the head so you're going to turn your work back over to where you left off and we're going to make our decrease rounds. And the decrease rounds mean that you're going to be decreasing the number of stitches in the round. So you're going to take your yarn marker, place it right where you left off, and you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches. And then you're going to single crochet two stitches together or make your decrease stitch. So you're going to go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop. 
Then go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three loops for a decrease stitch. And that single crochet, two stitches together, makes one stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches. and then you're going to single crochet two stitches together. So you can see how I'm holding my fingers to help stabilize it. And then go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a single crochet two stitches together. So go ahead, repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you want to add craft stuffing into the head. Then we're going to make the next decrease round. So for that last round we have 30 stitches in the round and with each of these decrease rounds you're going to be decreasing by six stitches. So I'm not going to give you the stitch count for each decrease round. So for our next decrease round, go ahead and move the yarn marker up to where you left off. And this time, you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches. And then you're going to single crochet two stitches together or make your decrease stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker one single crochet into three stitches and then single crochet two stitches together. Repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you can see how it's getting smaller and smaller gradually which is what we want and you can always add more craft stuffing if you need to. Then go ahead and move your yarn marker up and this time you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then single crochet two stitches together. And then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So I went ahead and added a little bit more stuffing, craft stuffing. Be careful you don't overstuff. Kind of shape the head as you crochet, closing the head. So now you can move the yarn marker up and this time you're going to make only one single crochet into one stitch and then single crochet two stitches together and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you can just remove the yarn marker and we're just going to single crochet two stitches together until it's almost closed and then slip stitch together. So you can see how my work looks right now. You can see that I didn't overstuff it and it's, I don't need to add any more stuffing. So when you're happy with the amount of stuffing, go ahead and just single crochet two stitches together until you're almost closed. Then we're going to slip stitch it closed. I'm going to make a couple more single crochet two stitches together. And now you can see that we're just about closed. So I'm going to go ahead and skip a stitch, go into the next stitch over. I'm going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And again, I'm going to skip a stitch, go into the next stitch over, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. And I think I'm going to go one more time, slip stitch, then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. So now you can get your tapestry needle and put that loose yarn end onto the tapestry needle and just go right where you finished off and then come out anywhere on the head 
and then just kind of gently pull on that loose yarn end and it buries it within the head and then just carefully trim the loose yarn end and that buries the loose yarn end into the head. 